Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's offer some late-breaking news on the Anthony Joshua Francis Ngannou fight. There is a very important interview, and I mean very important interview, of Joe Joyce. Right now, in that interview, and we'll place a link to it in the comment section of this YouTube video. In that interview, which is entitled, I've sparred Francis Ngannou and got knocked out by Anthony Joshua. Here's why I can't call their fight. Joe Joyce talks about preparing the fight. Daniel Dubois, a puncher, right? Everyone knows Dubois has a punch except Daniel Dubois. What was he doing waiting around fighting Usyk? What was he doing waiting around during his fight against Joe Joyce? Well, anyway, in preparing for that fight against Joe Joyce, just understand that Joe Joyce sparred four rounds with Francis Ngannou. Now, that's 2020. Folks, that's years before. Years before. Ngannou hops in the ring with Tyson Fury. Right? And, of course, Joyce, while he thought Ngannou was a bit UFC-ish. In other words, Joyce claims he could see the punches coming. That boxing requires a little bit more camouflage. My word, not Joe Joyce's. But understand, Joe Joyce was impressed during that sparring session with Ngannou's power. So then Joe Joyce saw Ngannou years later against Tyson Fury. Now understand, Joyce believes that Ngannou vastly improved his fight skills vastly improved his fight skills against Tyson Fury, right? He uh, literally says in this interview, if he lands one of those big shots like he hit Fury with, then I don't think Joshua is going to get up from that, right? Joyce firmly believes, firmly believes that this is a 50-50 fight. And I don't believe he's one of those fighters who's doing a favor for a promoter, right? I don't believe he's trying to help the fight sell tickets. He doesn't need to. This fight already has a lot of buzz. I believe what he's trying to do is to warn Joshua, his former Olympic sparring mate, who he sparred with many times. By the way, when they had an official amateur fight, Joshua won that fight by first round KO. But just to understand, these two guys on the, you know, same circuit sparred several times behind the scenes. And I believe Joyce is trying to warn Joshua, look, this guy is dangerous. Understand, too, Joyce himself is a puncher. I would argue Joyce is more front foot than Anthony Joshua. So here you have a front foot heavy Joe Joyce sparring with Nganu and reaching the conclusion after watching Ngannou against Tyson Fury, that this is a 50-50 fight against a member of the British boxing team who would go on to win the gold medal. Now let me uh, add a few points here. I believe uh, boxing's an expectation game, right? Um, we'll treat boxers differently depending on what we expect from them. Now just to understand, we expect far more from AJ than we do Nganu. Even though Nganu knocked down Tyson Fury, the idea is that he's still a newbie. He still hasn't officially won a professional pro fight. Right? Well, just understand, that places an inordinate amount of pressure on AJ because I believe AJ needs to make a statement. You have fighters like Amir Khan out there saying, look, man, please protect the dignity of boxing. Right? Understand how close boxing came to a B 
big time problem. We had to wait until the scorecard of the third judge to know who won the Tyson Fury and Ganu fight. Had that third judge gone for Nganu, you can imagine the situation in boxing right now. There'd be panic. Fighters you have never heard from for several years would suddenly come out of the woodwork and would start talking about how shocked they were at the upset. Well, understand, AJ, unlike Fury, here needs to make a clear statement. He can't eke this out. I'm not sure he can keep Nganu on the end of a jab, nor can he simply move away from Nganu like he did Andy Ruiz. Right, so politically, this fight's really almost a no-win for Joshua. Right, Joshua has to show he's a tough guy against a guy who might hit as hard as him. A guy who has already knocked down Tyson Fury, who Joshua hasn't fought. Right? A guy who has impressed Joe Joyce in sparring. A guy who, behind the scenes, and the public doesn't appreciate this, has been working on his boxing game and has been sparring with world-class fighters like Joe Joyce at least since 2020. Now let's shift gears here. Let me add, and someone has got to say it here. I don't like the winner of AJ versus Nganu fighting the winner of Usyk versus Fury. Folks, to me that sounds weak. Seems to me that the real action in the heavyweight division will be through Philip Ergovic and his share of the title. Right? How can a division this deep, and folks, it's deep. How can a division this deep find a way to freeze out, let's just name some names, Caballel, Zhang, Bacoli, Parker, Ruiz, Ortiz, Big Baby. Right, folks? I think it's incredibly weak, too to think that we would want to see a third A.J. Usyk fight. Folks, that, that doesn't work. Right? I also think it's weak of Tyson Fury to lock himself in to fighting Usyk twice and then to fighting the winner of this novelty match. Right? A guy in his second pro fight against Anthony Joshua, who's on the way back. Right, folks, it's, it's a novelty fight. Don't get me wrong. We don't know who's going to win it. But we can't say that these two guys in this novelty fight, right, after Joshua, you know, beats Robert Hellenius, right, after Joshua beats Jermaine Franklin, Otto Wallen, we can't say that this fight is a top of the heavyweight division fight. Right, so what I'd like to know here is how long am I going to have to wait to see Tyson Fury? And I believe he has a lot of problems against Usyk. I think Usyk's the betting side of the play. Folks, look at how close the line is now. Right, how long am I going to have to wait to see Tyson Fury? Fight a Caballel, a Zhang, a Bacoli, a Parker, a Ruiz, an Ortiz. Folks, these guys are ready right now. I believe Tyson Fury has come up with a way to have a full dance guard for at least the next two years. And to dodge most of these guys. Right, think of the age here. And I know heavyweights age more slowly, but think of the age here on... Zhang, on Ortiz, right? I want boxing fans to get by the names. I know Joshua's a big name. Should he be ahead of the line versus someone like Zhang, right? It, it's incredible, and I mean this, 
that Nganu fought Tyson Fury before Joshua did. Right? I need for folks to figure out, too, that Zhang fought Joe Joyce twice. Joshua has never fought Joyce as a pro. Right? Zhang also fought Ergovic. Right? Understand, Joshua hasn't fought Ergovic, nor has Tyson Fury. We as fight fans really shouldn't be suckered into hearing these, you know, oh, and the winner of the two fights, Fury against Usyk. The winner of those two fights is going to fight, let's hold our breath here, the winner of Nganu against AJ. Right, folks, is, is that the top of the heavyweight division to you right now? Tell us about it in the comment section of this YouTube video. Right? I believe Tyson Fury, and I give him credit on fighting Wilder three times. Right? But I think Tyson Fury, at this stage, after fighting Derek Chisora three times, right? I think Tyson Fury owes us more than locking himself in to 18 months of fights against Usyk, and I still don't believe that second Usyk fight happens, and the winner of this Nganu aj match. Right? That seems to be a little ridiculous to me. Right? Shouldn't we force the winner of Joshua Nganu to actually fight Ergovic? What, what would be offensive about that? <laughs> I don't understand. What would be offensive about that? Right? How about the winner of the fight to actually fight the winner of Zhili Zhang against Joseph Parker. Right? Instead, we have Nganu, and I know we look good against Fury. Right? Instead, we have Nganu on the verge of having access to the top heavyweights in a way that most of the division hasn't had access. As fight fans, you really should be a bit offended by that. Right? Let me say this too, and I don't say it lightly. I understand that Fury against Joshua would be a blockbuster fight. Blockbuster. Right? A good question is whether either of them, and I know, I know AJ looked great against Otto Wallen, but is any of them at their peak right now. Is this version of Tyson Fury better than the one who beat Vladimir Klitschko? Could you even imagine the Fury who beat Klitschko getting dropped by Nganu? Right? AJ, he looked great against Otto Wallen. Otto Wallen did give Tyson Fury a very hard time. I thought he was one of those fights where he's a better athlete than Tyson Fury, quite frankly. Right? But I don't think most in the public would place him ahead of Caballel, Zhang, Bacoli, Parker, Ruiz, or Ortiz. Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let me close by pointing this out too. Nganu is refreshing because he talks about his weaknesses. So he actually admits that going 10 rounds was hard on him. Right? He, he openly admits it. Right? I believe he had the fight won against Tyson Fury if he could have won the ninth or 10th round. He faded. I thought he lost both of those late rounds. Right? Well, just to understand, you need to pocket that information. He's 37 years old. Right? He spent a lifetime in UFC. His fight against AJ is 10 rounds. Understand, AJ would have a decided advantage if the fight were a 12-round fight. Right? A boxer who knows that an opponent is going to get winded by the end of the ninth round could pace himself so that the championship rounds 
are his. Right? It'll be interesting to see how they play this. Because Ngannou's fight against Tyson Fury was only 10 rounds. Right? If Ngannou beats AJ and then is in line to fight the winner of Fury Usyk, are they going to sell us that fight as a championship fight when it's only a 10 round fight? Are they going to cut two rounds off the championship rounds? Let me ask a question here. If you heard that they were cutting two rounds off of a Fury Usyk fight, would you be pleased? If Nganu is going to win the heavyweight championship or even challenge for the heavyweight championship, which he's already done, right? If he's going to challenge for the heavyweight championship from this point forward, especially if he's going to jump the line on numerous heavyweights, right? All the young guys, you have a 37-year-old just jumping the line on Big Baby Anderson here, right? Older guys, Zhili Zhang won a silver medal in the Olympics. Joe Joyce won a silver medal in the Olympics. How is Nganu getting a shot on AJ before those guys? Right? If he's going to be in the mix for another heavyweight championship fight, doesn't he have to do it the way everyone else in the heavyweight division has to do it? Doesn't he have to go 12 rounds, or at least agree to 12 rounds? Look, I got no problem if it's a one-round fight, if he wins by KO, right? But the fight has to be scheduled for 12 rounds. Don't you think a Luis Ortiz would love to hear that he's fighting for the heavyweight title and it's only 10 rounds? Right, a 44-year-old. Wouldn't he say, oh, great, okay, that sounds good. Right, folks, a lot of guys go 12 rounds because they have to, not because they want to. Why are we giving Nganu a break on that? I'm surprised AJ agreed to the 10 rounds. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if AJ's goal is to be heavyweight champ again, shouldn't he be fighting these fights, especially if the winner gets the winner of a heavyweight unification match? Right? Shouldn't, shouldn't he say, no, nah, look, this is boxing. Right? I want to be heavyweight champ. Let's make this 12 rounds. Understand what that does to AJ. A 10-round fight makes it more urgent. You're in against a puncher in Nganu. And you actually have to engage him because you have two less rounds in which to win the fight. If Nganu lands on AJ... And AJ gets up. Folks, there's going to be panic. And Ganu opens a two-round lead in a ten-round fight? You don't think that's going to lead to some desperation? Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.